my name is Shelley and welcome to my channel Shell Space. So recently I've been getting back into fantasy romance. I dabble in it once in a while, usually I don't stay in the genre too long, but this time I've stayed in it for at least two months and for me that's pretty good. And during my search I noticed that a lot of the more indie and self-pub fantasy books that like grabbed my attention. So I thought that I'd make a fun video making a list of all the indie and self-pub fantasies, romance fantasies that I want to read in the next little while. So I compiled a list of 10 books and I believe all of them are series or beginning of a series. So we'll start with number 10, 10 being the one that I'm like least interested into. I'm still interested in it. And then number one is like the one that I'm like, that's the one I'm gonna pick up next. Okay, so if anybody's new to my channel, I do vague synopsises synopsises, synopsises, synopsis, whatever. I do synopsises, but like they're so vague because I like going into story not really knowing very much about it. I like going in completely blind. That's just my personal preference. I don't know why, but I will give a brief synopsis, synopsis, why can't I say that word today? I'll give a brief description of what the story is about. Also, just a side note, I do tend to avoid any fantasies that have fae in like the description. Not that I have anything wrong with that. I just feel like I've been there, done that enough. I'd like to experience something new. So some of them will have fae in them, but overall the majority of the list that I'm going to talk about is kind of getting away from that. Number 10 is Blood and Steel by Helen Schuger. I'm so bad at names. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. This grabbed my attention because it was kind of pitched as uh, perfect fans for Bridge Kingdom and of Blood and Fire and The Witcher. Although I wasn't the biggest fan of From Blood and Ash, the other two really grabbed my attention. I really love The Bridge Kingdom and I like The Witcher. So I'm just gonna read from here. So it says, with her death foretold, Athia has only three years to become what she's always dreamed of, a warrior of legend. Women are forbidden to wield blades, so she has trained in secret for her entire life. Now racing against the clock, she fights to secure her place in elite guild charged with protecting the five kingdoms. That sounds pretty cool. I'm always up for a warrior woman, you know, Xena inspired. Sounds great. Okay. So that's my number 10. Number nine, I actually own a copy of, and that is The Song of the Marked by S.M. Gaither. I bought this like maybe last year, and I haven't read it because I heard a lot of polarizing things about it. People either love it or they hate it. And then I also heard that the audiobook was different from the physical book. So maybe there was some re revisions done, I don't know. But that, kind of made me not want to pick it up. The reason why I did pick it up is because I heard that this was more fantasy first, romance second. I'll just read the back real quick. Old gods are growing restless. Mercenary Cassia Grey Thorn cares about two things, completing her latest job and earning enough coin for the expensive medicine that keeps her mentor alive. So when a king commands her to investigate a strange plague devastating the empire, she cannot resist a massive reward he offers. This sounds really good. So I don't know, like comment down below, let me know if anybody's read this and if listened to the audiobook and if there's a difference of it. But overall, this sounds really good and I'm really interested in, plus I own a copy of it. So I do prefer the audiobook cover and I guess the original um, self-pub cover compared to this one. These covers to me are very generic. I'm not a big fan of them. I'm a sucker for old classic fantasy and sci-fi covers. So put like a, a illustrated person on top and I'm like, I'm happy. So yeah, not a fan of these covers. And I notice a lot of these series that I will be mentioning have covers like this. So, so my number eight is The Book of Azrael. I think it's Azrael by Amber Nicole. This grabbed my attention because it says world enders meets enders of worlds. And I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? Okay, thousands of years ago, Diana gave up her life to save her dying sister. She called upon anyone who would listen, not expecting a monster or far worse, any nightmare to answer. Now she does whatever Caden asks, even if that means securing an ancient relic from the very creature that hunt her. Uh, yeah, that sounds awesome. And I'm all for like ancient civilizations and gods and epic creatures and, and being brought back to life. Sounds great. So my number seven is Outlaw Mage by K.S. Villaso. I'm actually currently reading 
Uh, their first work, The Wolf of Aranyaro, I'm doing a buddy read with my friend in Discord. I have some issues with The Wolf of Aranyaro, but it is their first book, so I can see the potential of them being a really great author because their world building is just so good. And their character work is really good as well. I just have it a little bit of issues with the pacings, but this book really grabbed my attention, not only for the cover, because I did say I'm a sucker for, you know, people on the cover, but also it is, uh, I, I don't know if it's in the same world as the Wolf of Arnero, but it might be. So I have to research that, but if it is, that's really awesome. So it's like the first sentence that actually really grabbed me because I don't know, it just, it hit home. It really grabbed me. Okay. So it says, despite Rosha's best efforts, she will never fit in to her classmates. She is forever an outsider, a girl from the fringes of the empire that's just lucky enough to have well-off parents. To her teachers, she's either a charity case or an exception to the rule. Worse, she's still nothing but a status symbol for her father, a child gifted with magic to show his powerful friends that even people like them could belong in an empire. That sounds awesome. That sounds like the beginning of a really epic fantasy. Yeah, I'm really excited for that one. Number six is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. So this was originally brought to my attention by another YouTuber and that being because it's about a mature romance and I am all for that because I am not a young pup anymore. So I look forward to things that I can actually relate to. And this is the quick synopsis. A mother will do anything to save her child no matter the cost. After her daughter is kidnapped, Emmeline Highclere a 34-year-old mother living in isolation with memory and grief, her only companion must do everything in her limited power and divine abilities to get her girl back. So that synopsis sounds really interesting, plus that it was recommended by Jess from Honest Fiction, who does have a lot of experience with romantic fantasy, so I will take her recommendation and I will pick it up. So number six is actually probably a, I'm more drawn to the cover than anything else, and that is The Road of Bones by Demi Winters. Yeah, like, can we look at this cover? It's just, it's pretty, it's so pretty. So I guess this is a new cover, um, but good job on the new cover. Okay, so it's Vikings meets Throne of Glass. I like Vikings, I used to like Throne of Glass. I like some aspects of Throne of Glass. It got a little bit convoluted towards the end, but the overall thing, I like it. So I'm gonna summarize the synopsis real quick because there's a lot of skin naming words and names, and I cannot pronounce those. So we're just gonna summarize real quick. So essentially it's about a main character who her father just recently died and his last dying words were to send her on this quest down these road of bones for some unknown reasons. And then because of whatever her father said, this queen of the land has sent her warriors hunting after the main character. So essentially it's just like she's on the run and these guys are chasing her and I guess there's some mystery. There's mystery and murder and dark creatures. It sounds really interesting and it's gotten really good reviews. So I'm definitely going to check it out. My number four is Lady of Darkness by Melissa Rorich. Um, yeah, this has gotten a lot of traction lately. I've seen it on Instagram. I've seen it on YouTube a bunch. And I honestly didn't really look at the synopsis. I just kind of looked at Goodreads to see if there was Faye and there was no Faye. So I'm like, check. So the synopsis is owned by a ruthless assassin lord, Scarlet, and her two sisters have been trained since they were children to torture and take lives. They're the most feared trio in the continent, but they also are wild and unpredictable. A childish night, Scarlet finds herself locked away, a noble's household trapped and forgotten until she's ready to fall into line. So very much like Throne of Glass, where you got like, you know, your assassin young lady and probably mysteries and other things. So that sounds pretty good, but it's gotten really good reviews. A lot of people like it, so I will definitely be checking it out. My number three is Rain and Ruin by J.D. Evans. Uh, this was originally brought to my attention because I believe it was the winner of SBFBO 2020 or 2019, one of those. And the fact that like a romantic fantasy won that competition screams to me that it must be really good. So the synopsis is, all magic is beautiful and terrible. You do not see the beauty of yours or the terror of mine. You can stop a heart and I can stop your breath. 
She is the heir to a kingdom that once ruled the world. He is an unwanted prince with power to destroy. She is order and intelligence, a woman to fit in a man's place. He is chaos and violence and will stop at nothing to protect his people. That sounds like opposites attract, and I love me an opposite attract story. So uh, yeah, because this won the award, I am really inclined to pick it up soon. Actually, my number one and two are kind of interchangeable. I'm excited to get into both of them. I'm gonna pick this one down as number two because I heard that it was uh, compared to Akatar. Like I mentioned before, I'm kind of a little sick of that whole thing. Akatar, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I've just read so many books like that. But this book has gotten so much traction as of late. I kind of want to jump on the hype train and see what it's about. So it is called The Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. And this is a, I believe it's a four book series and maybe ongoing. There's at least four books out right now. And the synopsis says, when an old secret catches fire, everything will burn. In a mortal world colonized by gods, check for me, uh, and ruled over by a descendant, the cruel offspring Daimi yearns to escape the insular life of her poor village. Her mother suddenly disappears and the discovery of the dangerous secrets of, about her past, unexpected opportunity to enter a dark world of the descendant royalty and unlock a web of mystery her mother left behind. So secret heir, secret royal, I don't know. But gods, yes, I am all for gods, and I believe that there's dragons in this. I think I saw somewhere that someone said dragons, so I'm like, gods and dragons, yes please. So yeah, this has gotten a lot of traction, a lot of people are crazy about it right now, so I obviously want to read it because, you know, FOMO. My number one is Daughter of the John Empire by Frankie Diane Malice. I hope I'm saying that right. This one grabbed my attention because of the setting. So essentially, this grabbed my attention because it is about Lymeria, mythical empire that existed before Atlantis. Cleopatra meets Fourth Wing in this romantic series with forbidden magic, political intrigue, and slow burn spice. So our main character is third in line in the seat of power of Balmeria, a position of wealth and privilege, but not safety. Balmeria falls under the rule of the Limerian Empire, survivors of the celestial wars whose islands sank in the drowning. Now all Limerians submit to the emperor's strict law about magic. He decides what magic can be practiced and what power remains forbidden. He decides who will die for possessing forbidden magic. So that sounds really cool. And yeah. I'm really interested because I want to find out what magic they're using. That's my list of all the indie and self-pub romantic fantasies that have grabbed my attention. Obviously, if there's more, uh, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Have you read any of these books? Do you recommend which books I should read first? Also, if you have any other recommendations that I didn't list that you think that I would like, uh, I would love to hear it. If you liked my video, think about liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Goodreads. All the links are down below. And thank you so much and have a fantastic day. Bye.